extent of it. But it's at this point that a lot of people say, we don't worship demons. It doesn't mean the same thing today as it did in the past. It's harmless. It's innocent. It's fun for the kids. It's for young people. Yet history shows Halloween unmistakably as a religious, a pagan, a Roman holiday. And religion is the adoration, the obedience, and the service rendered to an object of one's worship. It presupposes profession, practice, or observance of whatever the belief or practice, in this case Halloween, as required by some superior authority. It's an indisputably clear truth that Halloween is not commanded, sanctioned, or even advised by the Lord God. The true Christian's superior authority is the Scripture and the Lord of the Scripture. And therefore, the Lord says, and let's turn now to 1 Thessalonians 5.22. And uh, we could go all over the Bible, but I'm just trying to hit the, the high ones. 1 Thessalonians 5 and verse 22 says abstain from every form of evil. Now, we don't need a lot of uh, enlargement on that uh, because when this message... By the way, the book of Acts gives us the picture behind what all the epistles are hitting at, okay? So the apostle Paul here says, abstain from every form of evil. Don't give place to the devil, to the Ephesians, he said. Why is he saying all that stuff to them? Well, let's go back now to Acts 19 and look. Because you might say, well, that's a bit radical. You mean we should jettison our, you know, my witch outfit? I paid a lot of money for that, you know, in college. And it's still cute for costume parties or whatever. Well, does the Bible address that? Yes. Look, look at Acts 19. And uh, this, by the way, I can never go to Acts 19 without stopping at verses 17 and 20. Because... Do you know what the two signs of a vibrant church are? They're right here. Verse 17, this became known to both uh, the Jews and the Greeks dwelling in Ephesus, and, the fear, and fear fell on them all, and the name of the Lord was magnified. Do you know what the first evidence of a vibrant church is? Christ is preeminent. He is the focus of... Uh, everything that goes on, it's just the focus of why they meet. You know, a lot of churches, you can't tell what they're meeting for. Are they saving, you know, the whales? Are they, you know, I mean, it just, it's such a mixed up message. But Christ is to be preeminent in, in his church. But look at verse 20. The second facet of a vibrant church is the word of the Lord grew mightily and prevailed. The word of God is prominent. I know it's so interesting to watch uh, the, the new people kind of gravitate over by that wreath and over by that wreath. You know, they kind of slip in and everything. And I watch them. And, you know, the first couple of weeks they come, a lot of them don't bring Bibles because it, you don't usually need a Bible in a church nowadays because it's only kind of alluded to at the beginning. And then there are about 35 fun stories, and then they might talk about it at the end. And by about the third week, you notice they're coming with these funny Bibles, you know that you shouldn't carry around you know we don't have one here kind of a coffee table bible and then finally they have a normal bible and they stick and it, it's really neat but the word of god should be prominent in our lives and in our church but look at verses 18 and 19 and many of chapter 19 and many that believed came and confessed and showed their deeds hmm and many of them also, which use curious arts, brought their books together and burned them before men. What is that? Ah, I'll give you another page. I, I pastored in the most Catholic state in the Union, Rhode Island. And there was a revival in Rhode Island. I remember the evangelist came in into our church. And he brought, I mean, he moved the communion table, which was <laughs> almost the church came unglued. And he brought a plastic trash can and put it up in front of the pulpit and he preached one of the most powerful sermons I've ever heard and he says if you have at home crucifixes prayer beads images of Mary if you have any stuff left over from eastern mysticism the, I mean he just went through this list and it was after an incredibly powerful sermon on the holiness of God he says you go home and you come back here tonight and you put it in that trash can. I'm going to destroy every bit of it. I'll tell you what, that, there were four or 500 people there. That 40 gallon, I don't know how big it was, was overflowing. I mean, there were so many crucifixes and, you know, those ugly uh, Hindu god things and all that stuff. Just, and I wondered, who would keep that stuff around their house anyway? 
you know. But it was just they needed that prompting to do it. And and what happened, by the way, after that, the revival was that down family lines of these Italian Catholic lines, we'd only seen like one person saved from each family and just started going like this. I mean, the the Andre family got saved and the you know, I mean, we could just go right down the line, and, and I'm talking about all the way up to the great, the, these patriarchs, these grandparent Italian Roman Catholics. And what had been holding back was the people were dishonoring the Lord with all this stuff, um, which had to do with false religion. Well, here's another verse. Turn from Acts to 1 Corinthians. And these are all, if someone asks you why you're being so radical, you can say, because God says abstain from all appearance of evil. And when I look at the 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 demons and goblins and, and apparitions from cemeteries, that's not of God, that's of Satan. That's, that's not heavenly, that is hellish. And I'm supposed to abstain, 1 Thessalonians 5.22. And in Acts 19, in the early church, they came and, and destroyed everything that had to do with all this stuff. But now 1 Corinthians 10.31. Whether therefore you eat or drink or celebrate holidays, <laughs> I added, whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. And this extends even into watching of demons, of ghosts, of apparitions. The Spirit of God, Ephesians 5, can be quenched and, and 1 Thessalonians 5 can be grieved. God does not want us to be associated, to look at, to fill our minds with, to be captivated by anything to do with Satan. And there is increasing occultic activity in the movies, in the cartoons. Do you know what one of the universal symbols in, in art is of occultic stuff? Glowing eyes. Turn on your TV on Saturday morning if you can stand it. And look at the glowing eyes of those cute little creatures that help sell cereal. Those people that produce that, and the cartoons too, they're not dumb. They know what they're doing. That's the medium they work in 